Do you think E I M or L M will ever get caught? Um, nah. I, as recently, I heard that he's. You know, I've seen the story that he's really sick. I'm surprised he's still alive, to be honest. Mm. But I think that that he's probably gonna uh, die a free man. Oh, uh, he he's just. He's too much of a simple person, and he's not, you know, he's too smart, you know? And at this at this age, I, I want to say that he's probably already kind of, like, stepped away. His opportunity to let himself slip his past? Yeah, I think that he, he's too smart. He's probably, you know, make sure he, you know, from afar, he, he, he probably makes, you know, bigger decisions. But I doubt he even cares what's going on. Right. Salutes, Michelle. For the dollar ninety nine super chat, super chat, she said, "Jay, would you take an undercover job with Trump in D.C.?" In, in what way, uh, undercover job? Which I'm all about change. Okay, I don't have a my, my political views are kind of changing, especially what's going on. Um, it, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say that I, I think that um, where I'm at today, I, I feel like I'm. If, Trump were to get through all these legal issues, I think, you know, I'm 100% of the Trump supporter today uh, because of, I believe in, in getting things done than not doing nothing at all. And because I'm, like, we're aware of, of what happened, um, I think that there has to be something drastic, and I think that he actually could be the answer for that. Uh, but sure. An undercover job, I'll take an undercover one or a, a out one, you know, anything to, to basically, you know, try to promote change and, and change the way drug trafficking actually has been combated and hopefully, you know, bring a positive outcome. Part of the, uh, America is the government. And, you know, we might not always like or appreciate how things get done, but what makes this country, you know, the country that it is, and even though we might always look at its flaws, it's still the most, you know, amazing country. And I, I really think that there's so many things that could be done. Sometimes it just takes, you know, a different view. And I think I'm going through those struggles now because I'm always telling everyone, look, what I'm bringing to the table when it comes to law enforcement is just a different view on on how to combat it. You know, let's, let's try something different. And now I understand Trump more than ever. Again, it might not always be like the perfect circumstances with the perfect way it comes out because I, I see it today. Like I'm supposed to be put in this situation where I'm supposed to be a, a great, you know, lecturer or, or a great keynote, you know, speaker and never say the wrong thing or everything uh, gets um, taken out of context. So I basically understand, you know, him more than ever. Mm -hmm. But, then, you know, again, I wouldn't put myself in some of those situations that he's put himself in, but... Uh, I'm all about changing, all about what's doing what's best for the country and 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 doing what's right, especially for, you know, for our future generations. And for me, my particular, you know, subject and my particular, you know, because of my background is drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm putting my efforts into, you know. Right. Um, some people might not agree to it, you know, but I get um, this is because of my life and, and what I know and what I've seen. Um you know, if, if it's, you know, to someone wanting to, you know, I, I could see your calling shy when it comes to human trafficking and and that, I could be like, you could probably make a change with that, you know? Mm -hmm. I could help you with that. But mm -hmm. I think we all have it, you know, our own calling. Omar Caranza asks, can you ask him if he would have ever thought Chapo Isidro would be head leader of a cartel? Did he see those qualities or traits in him? Okay, oh, man. Did I ever see those qualities? No, I'm be honest with you. I'm I'm being biased too. Uh, can I be biased because I saw him as a uh, you know, I mean he was. I just didn't see him. I still do. I, I mean he's obviously the boss, but he's not like the boss again. He was a sicario, you know. He's he was the head of boss the, by default because there's nobody left. <laughs> basically, uh, but he was a sicario. You get me? Like a sicario, he was the head of that you know, sell, you know, at that time he was like a big important, you know, he was basically the Chino Antax before the Chino Antax for the Chapo side. Or the the Cholo before the Cholo for the Chapo side. So no, but I didn't see him like that. I'll be honest with you, like, um, when I started actually, when I first met him, he had never even made any real money. Anything he had got was because they, you know, it, they would take or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So, it came a long way. 
I did hear stories about him still. Long story, but I did hear stories about him still being able to talk very highly about me. So that says a lot. Yeah, I mean, after he snatched up your brother, of course. Yeah, after the fact, after all that. <laughs> it's bananas. And it's like, it, yeah. and it's like with me, like just where my brain be at, like that be a question I don't be wanting to ask. Uh, P, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't ask him stuff like that either. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't ask him that. That question sat there last week because I don't want to ask him that question. And uh, he, you know, he was covering the show that day, so my brother uh, did a good job last week too. Um, he, big shout out to my brother. Hopefully, he's feeling better. Shout out to P. Hopefully, he's feeling better. He did a great job, man. He always does a great job. The chat loves him. They love having the conversations with him. It's a, it, it's a trip. Somebody asked, uh, who is smarter, Alfredo or Ivan? Or who is more like, who is better at the game? Ivan. Ivan? Yeah, it still is. Edgar was probably way better, smarter. I mean, not way better, but I mean, way, you know, he was uh, more intelligent. But, uh, I'll take that back. He was probably better at the game. This is a good one right here. Natasha Ruth said, we hear about female powerful cartel women. How did they operate in this world? Did they get respect or were they just fronts and didn't have real power? Let's talk about female cartel leaders. I believe that that that, that they're respected in the same way. The same rules apply. Same rules apply. It doesn't matter if you're, you know. I'm not even, they're not even if on you my make radar. It. I'm ignorant to the story. I mean, who's out there? Who did you work? Yeah. Is, is there people that you I worked mean, the women that you worked with out there? I mean, okay, so in the States, I work with women. Uh, I've seen women be hustlers and all that. But in Mexico, um, there was, uh, I knew of, of at least two of them. Um, I dealt with one of them directly. She was like, a, you know, I feel like sometimes she was a little bit rougher, like hard to deal with just because she was a woman and she kind of wanted to like put her like, I guess, balls on the table. Mm, it'd be like that. <laughs> you know, kind of a way, but yeah. yeah. Um. I, I I believe you know they would have the same you know the same rules will apply. Asino said, "Jay, do you think El Mencho will get caught before the end of this decade?" I believe that that he will. I mean, either he'll be caught or he's going to be unalive. Um, I think the United States is going to be you know doing a. In a uh, situation or in a position where they're going to be, you know, really clamped down. And um, I see some political um, uh, chess playing uh, happening right now, especially with uh, Mexico, like starting to deny some of the agents. But with the new uh, president coming in in Mexico and stuff like that, I think that uh, that's going to hurt because of so much corruption that's being ousted. And usually that means that the next president is going to want to try to, you know, I'll make a statement of this, you know, last president. So I believe that there's going to be major things going on. Jay, why do you think the feds didn't want Mayo and ABL when you could have gave them all up? Mm, I don't know. I ask myself that question all the time. Mm. I'm going to say this. Chose. I'm going to say this. It's because here's the issue. I'll, I'll say it again. When we speak about the feds, you know, when we think about the feds, we think about it this big old entity, right? Powerful, intelligent entity as a whole. But that's not the way investigations work. The investigations work more as individuals. And that's where the problem goes. That's where it lies. Basically, what's on my plate? I don't, you know. Right. You know, what Blind I can fit on my plate and some of these names are, you know could fit on the table so they'll take what's on the table and not you know leave the rest chucky said did you guys ever think of robbing the plug and disappearing after the kidnapping i know it, it would have been in my head man i have a that's good that's a great story for my book mm. um that, and we'll that be there and we'll be here to cover said book chucky, yeah. don't worry that story um, i mean it's a, i think it's a great story i i did i'm always said that i I always try not to be influenced by someone else, like peer pressure, but I do speak about this one instance where I felt like this person was making sense to me and I had a chance to, not to, like, I didn't have to run out, but, you know, but then again, that's not who I was, so. Uh, but there is a, a particular time, a subject like that came up. 
But again, I want I want you to understand. Like this was like early on. Like I'm not thinking about running off with someone else's bag. I, why would I run off with something someone else's bag when I was making more money than that other person? Sometimes I it's just you know wouldn't make sense. Uh, Jay, what happened to all of your homes in Chicago and your realtor gal? We trying to find her, Michelle. We trying to get Stashley. That's what I call her, Stashley. Uh, what happened to all your homes in Chicago and your realtor girl? What would have been? Uh, that would have been my dream job. I used to stage homes for sale and lease. <laughs> oh man, you know what? Um, that always it, it kind of runs through my mind sometimes. Um, of like, like the people that could actually um. Would have helped or whatever the case is, but I don't know what happened to her. But the houses, most of the houses that we had, uh, we had to give them up to the government so we could actually get a Route 20 from Wisconsin to Chicago. In Chicago, those houses. You got to pay for that, basically. <laughs> basically, just so you guys know, Route 20 is like when they move venue. The reason why is because Wisconsin would have probably gave us 25 years after we cooperated. Mm. After. Yeah. Damn, boy, he uh, was twenty five after. They gave um, you know, I'm gonna tell you, they gave two of my customers, Jerome and and Sandra, and she was one of my a uh, really big customer of um, mine at one point. Uh, they both cooperated. And they both got thirty years. Fuck. And what? So, so you get the you get to be labeled the 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 rat, and you still get thirty years. So what was what, what if they wouldn't have uh if what would they got if they wouldn't have cooperated? I don't know. <laughs> Hundred years, you gonna give them life? Like what are we talking about here? Uh, Anthony Martinez said, "Did you take did you take a lot of heat for not responding to being kidnapped by the local gangs in Chicago?" All right, I'm gonna we'll say it again. Here. I never cared what the street said. Maybe because I couldn't, when you're at the top, you can't hear like that, you know? And why would I care? You know, like I always said, you know, little money never told big money what to do. You heard of that saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think not that I didn't care about that. Did, do I remember it crossing my mind back then? Maybe, but I'm the like, man. I'm like, you see, that's how you get caught up in the little, like, right? In the fishnet with everyone else. Why are we all up in the fishnet, fish? You know? <laughs> and I'm over there swimming in the pond. Uh, because I just can't, you know, I couldn't do something like that. I mean, I didn't want to get caught up in like that. Right. Because the street did like to talk and everyone knew. So you imagine? You imagine all the bodies they put on me now? Right. You imagine? when It, it just wasn't me. Jay, did Annabelle Hernandez ever reach out to you or P mm -hmm. to do a book or anything? I have some mutual friends or associates and connections, but I'm going to guess um, she didn't, but I, I understand why. She's in the Mexico part of it. She probably doesn't believe in, you know, or already told her story enough where it's like, it's not anything you know valuable to her because she's you know writes about like ongoing issues or whatever story she makes up of at the time basically she she does talk a lot of facts but she also puts a you know it's like i want to say it's like 60 percent her opinion you know and her own mind i feel like that's how people feel about Luis Chaparro, they always tell me, oh, el pone crema en los tacos. <laughs> You'd be adding extra shit. I mean, I don't yeah, know. you know, I mean, because it's, it's like, I guess it's, it's what journalism is, is someone's opinion. But I feel like sometimes she, you know, really presses the issue. She overdoes it with her opinion and she'll double down on something, you know?